uh, we have <clears throat> an interview today with Mr. Bill Gray here of Dunlap. Uh, most everybody probably knows Mr. Gray. Yeah, from uh, he's been around here a while, haven't you, Mr. Gray? <laughs> yes, sir. All my life. <laughs> and uh, uh, we're going to be talking about Days of Yesteryear, which comes up next Saturday and Sunday. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, October 21st and 22nd, Saturday and Sunday. All right, and um, let's talk about some things that, uh, well, first of all, let's get into the, the uh, now, how long has this been going on? Well, actually, the show was a little bit late getting started. The Raymond Miller and his son used to go around to all the different shows that were going on at that time and sell tractor parts. Uh -huh. And they kind of got interested in maybe starting a show. So they rebuilt an old Alice Chandler tractor and had it ready to have a little show. That was in 1994, 95, somewhere along in there. Uh -huh. And then in 1996, the fair had a show down at uh, the fairgrounds, was down at where the restaurant is now at Jack, uh, at the road at the intersection where the new filling station is. Yes, uh -huh. I don't know the name of the road. But anyway, the fair put up tents and uh, had their fair down there that year. And Raymond and Jeremy brought a tractor up there. So that was kind of the start of it in 1996. And some others kind of got joined in just on individuals. They'd go to different locations around. Uh, one of the years in there, they had took tractors up to the coke ovens uh -huh. and displayed them up at the coke ovens. Then the, some other people got involved with what we call hit and miss engines and they started bringing a trailer with hit and miss engines on them. Uh, Willie Wilford brought a trailer with corn grinders on it. You put oh, a yeah, little corn yeah. in it and grind it and yeah. shell it to feed chickens and so forth. So that's kind of how it got started. And then in 2005, uh, they kind of got everybody together and we met down at the restaurant there that Mr. Lofty had uh -huh. at the time and started the, actually started what we call now the tractor show group. It started out as Sequatchie Valley Historical Agricultural Association. And then we kind of thought maybe we'd get some ladies involved or the women's group would you uh -huh. know, come off with a wing of it. And, and then we named the tractor portion Days of Yesteryear. So that's how it got started in 2005. Wow, so that's uh, been a while, 18 yeah. years. 18 years. Wow. Now, uh, <clears throat> um, now, I know uh, from its inception, it has grown every year. Yes, sir. It certainly has. And and you, the crowds have grown as well, haven't The they? crowds have grown. We've had better attendance every year from uh, people participating in the show, bringing tractors, bringing hit and miss engines, uh, bringing demonstration stuff. You know, we'd have a, a little sawmill there. We'd have grind, grinders. We'd have blacksmiths. I mean, we and every year it just kind of people would all of a sudden start showing up. It was kind of interesting because at that time we were still in the field down there where right. the restaurant was. Uh -huh. And uh, it was on the main highway so people would come by the going to Kettner's Mill. That was the thing that we was kind of concerned about. We were on the same weekend as Kettner's Mill. Well people would go by and, and see us out there. We'd have some flags up and stuff and see that everything going on. And they'd actually stop by and stay a little while, and then they'd go on down uh, to yeah. Kettnersville. Yeah. Or they'd come from Kettnersville and stop by on their way back. So we, you know, we picked up some people just by being visible there on the interstate or on the highway. Right. And uh, now uh, you, you were down there by the electric co-op for so long, and now this year you got a new location, right? Yes, sir. We moved up to the electric co-op, I think, in about 2009, somewhere along in there. And... That has worked out real well for us. That place was was grown up there, and we went in there and mowed it all off and cleaned it off. All the volunteers in the tractor club came to work, and uh, that's worked out real well for us. There's a lot of trees there, a lot of shade, and uh, again, it was on the main highway, so right. people could see it and <clears throat> stop by and enjoy it. We had power up there, which we didn't have at the old location, so that helped us out. People could come in and plug up to some power. We had limited right. power. And uh, so again, it just kept growing every year. More and more people show up and more and more tractors. Now this year you're going to be at Coop's Creek, right? 
That is correct. The power board sold that property to an organization that's putting in a solar farm there. Right. If you've driven by there lately, you've seen it. The solar panels are already installed and they're working to make the connection to the power board or whoever they sell their power to. And we moved down to Coops Creek here in downtown Dunlap. And if you go through town now, you'll see two big signs with arrows on them pointing to where you turn in to come to the tractor show. And that's going to be a, a blessing to us because there's plenty of power there. Now people can bring RVs, can bring your motor home that they hook or trailer behind and with a tractor on it, you know, right, right. come in and stay all night and have power and water. And uh, got a stage so we can start bringing in performers to the show, which we've never had before. Uh, we had a couple of little bluegrass bands come in a time or two, but we didn't have an adequate place for them right, to perform. Right. So that's going to open that up. They have restrooms here that are handicap approved. And so it's going to be a win-win situation for our tractor club. Yeah, and I'm excited about that because it's, it's a large area. Yes. So you could add a, a lot more stuff than you've had. That's correct. We, uh, I don't, I have to, I don't remember the exact date, but somewhere down through there we added uh, lawn and garden tractor pools. Uh -huh. And that's been a big hit. There's a lot of people come from, I mean, a long distances to pull lawn and garden tractors. And we're set up to do the same thing down here at the new location. We've also added through the years the, what we call the tractor train. Uh, all of us go to shows all over the country. And we went to a show that had a little tractor, or a lawnmower really, pulling 55 gallon drums that had been put on dollies right. for kids to ride in. And that kind of caught our attention. So what we did, members of the tractor club that had different brands of tractors made one of each. Uh -huh. So I ended up making a Massey Harris because that's what I grew up on. I'm a John Deere guy by heart and everything I operate is John Deere. But I grew up on Massey Harris and I still got the original tractor that I yeah. grew up on. And so I made a little Massey Harris barrel to be pulled behind the tractor, a little lawn and garden tractor. Uh -huh. And some other guys made an Oliver and somebody else made a Massey Ferguson and an International. So we ended up with you know, several barrels that could be pulled behind a tractor for the tractor show. And we run them all day long. It's, kid, it's free for the kids to ride. They just go around and around. They line up and everybody has been so far really courteous about it. And the kids line up and get in the barrels. Now when they come back, if there's nobody waiting, they can just ride again. Ride again yeah. But if somebody's waiting, well then they have to get out and let them go and then ride again. A little later on, Mr. Miller, who was in the club, got excited about making some really fancy looking little barrels. <laughs> I mean, he dressed them up. He made one that looked like a GMC uh, car engine and put all the spark plug wires on it. I mean, he, it's really dressed up and decked out. And after that, he's made several of them. He made an airplane one, he made a wrecker one. He just loved building old little cars. Well, So we've got a pretty long train now of, of some pretty <laughs> nice looking cars. And it works out well. And I, I've seen those at, uh, you know, like uh, pumpkin patches and right. other places. And right. those are really neat because the kids love them. Yes. Uh, they have a good time on them. And we get telephone calls from churches, local churches, the schools, even in Chattanooga. We go to Chattanooga to some churches with the tractor train and pull them for they have a special events of some sort. Well, that's neat. Now, what uh, other than the, the train and the uh, lawn tractor pull, what are some other activities y'all have going on? Well, for the kids, we'll have a bouncy house going on. We'll have uh, horseshoes there. We'll have cornhole, I believe is what it's called, uh, where yeah. you pitch a little bag of sawdust. I don't know yeah. what's in the bags, but uh, <clears throat> For the little kids, that's what we'd have going. We'd have sack races for the, you know, the bigger kids and stuff. And uh, we really don't have a lot of kids show up and we got to develop that part of it. Uh, the people that come usually are, are you know, older people and, and bringing their kids or their grandkids. Now, Music Makers has been nice to come up there and perform, you know, in the last few years. They're not performing this year 
because we didn't get everything lined up in time. Oh, okay. But they bring their their kids get an opportunity to come up on the stage and uh -huh. you know be in front of people. So that's a win win situation for the the community. Uh, let's say we have hay rides, we have tractor rides, and this offer more and more as we come as we go forward. If somebody is interested and brings it up, we try to make it available. And uh, we were talking earlier before our interview. Uh, of course, this is days of yesteryear, uh, how farming is uh, going away. Yes. Uh, uh, it's not like it used to be, and uh, how a lot of people uh, today, a lot of young people especially, and I'm not criticizing them by no means, but they just don't know. Uh, you know, I saw someone the other day that said, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, they said, why do I need a farm? I can just go to the store and buy my, uh, you know, food. And yeah. when they don't realize how that food got to the store. That is so true. The generation now are, are three or four generations away from the farm. You know, the older folks like myself that grew up on the farm uh, and knew what it was all about, we had to go to work every day, you had to milk cows. Our particular farm shipped milk from that farm for over 150 years. Wow. And we went out of the dairy business. My son was running it. We went out of the dairy business a couple of years ago because there just was no money in anymore. You, you know, you had to be tied down and you was working for nothing. So, we switched over to beef cattle and, and grain. And uh, but the people are so far away from it, they don't realize what's required from the farmer to get what you get at the grocery store available. Right, and uh, like uh, well, with beef cattle, you know, you uh, that's a a daily thing you have to have your hay and your feed and, right. and so many things uh, your corn and all that stuff that you have to grow alongside having your pastures and you got to have plenty of pasture land for your cattle right. you can't just have a just a small little plot of land no if you run a hundred head of cattle you got to have uh, you know several hundred acres of pro property to like you said to grow the crops to feed them in the winter time and the risk involved in doing all of that is substantial you know if you have a bad year you can have three or four good years and one bad year just wipes that out. In right. our little part of the country over here in East Valley Road, where I'm from, it was stayed in families for generations. Our property didn't change hands. Uh, people knew everybody. You knew everybody who went up and down the road. You, right. it was, you knew every vehicle. But now, you know, the old folks are gone and the young folks, they can't afford to do anything with the property. So they're just sitting on it and finer and later they you know they turn it loose and and there you go the the agriculture community that we once had is really dwindled in our whole county and, and the whole valley is the same way right right there's not there's a couple of big beef people now or big farmers if you want to call them that left in the county and that's about it i know uh, it's been uh, several years now uh, i flew out to california one summer and uh, when I got over the, <clears throat> I was waiting to get over the Midwest because I wanted to see the farms from the plain. And you're talking about farms. Yes. <laughs> There's some huge farms Those out there. Those big crop circles. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd always heard about the crop circles, but I'd never seen them until that, that time when I flew out to California. And I thought, well, that's really neat. But, you know, from the air, they look big. So I imagine how big they were when oh, you actually yeah, on the they, ground. They're huge. And, I think some of them are like 600 acres or something just in one of those circles. And, that's, that's where the majority of stuff comes from now. It, it's not local, most of it is not. Right. It's, it comes from out west. And you mentioned about uh, you having a bad year. I mean, there's uh, a lot of times the uh, the weather affects uh, all the crops. Yes. You know, uh, affects your hay and your corn that you can grow. Yeah. Uh, if you have a bad year, if it's a hot year and a dry year, then you don't have that much hay or you don't have that much uh, corn. Uh, this year we had quite a bit of rain this summer, right. so uh, actually some of the farmers had a couple of uh, things of hay this year. Right. And uh, so that that was good for them. This is a good year for hay. You, you get two cuttings off when it's, you know, a lot of good rain and so forth. And that really helps out because, you, like you say, you have to have it. If you have a bad year and a low supply of feed for the winter, then you have to cull your cattle down to where, you, you know, you got enough to cover them. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so a lot of people don't understand. And then... Uh, you're talking about uh, uh, running your tractors, you're talking about diesel fuel, uh, and then your parts, if something tears up, they're not cheap anymore. Nope. 
And, uh, you know, people just don't understand. I th well, I think they kind of understand, but they don't understand. There's more to it than just jumping on your tractor and, and going out in the pasture. Yeah, it's, that is correct. Well, it's kind of like our tractor show. People have asked us several times, why don't you put on two tractor shows? Why don't you put on one in a spring? Again, it's like you say, they don't realize the amount of work goes in to putting on an event like this. <laughs> right. And the, you know, the loading of, the cleaning up of the equipment, the cleaning up of the tractors a little bit. Now, I, ones I bring, I've got their working clothes on. I wash them, but they're not repainted and right. you know, all, all decked out. But it's a lot of work to, to gather everything up and put it on down here. And I want to say for the merchants here in town who have been super, super nice about supporting the Tractor Club, uh, one of our initial objectives was to make everything free. Uh, everything you go to now, every event, it costs you to get in, it costs you to park, it costs you every time you turn around. So if you take a family of four or five people going to an event like that, it runs into a lot of money. Yeah. And so we, our objective was to have it available free. You come, all it's going to cost you is what you eat. And if you buy something from the craft people or the vendors, you know, you'd have to pay for that. But you can get in for nothing and stay all day for nothing. If you want to bring your own uh, grilled cheese sandwich, you can do that too. <laughs> but uh, the merchants have stepped up and been super responsible and positive about donating. And we put out a little book that we hand out at the show, show who all the merchants were that contributed to making it free. And we really, really appreciate that. Without that, we never could have got started. Well, we have a giving community here. They give for just everything. They don't, because uh, uh, everybody, I think, uh, just just my personal thought, I just think that everybody knows where they came from. Right. And they want to help those who uh, are trying to help. Right. Uh, they just have a giving heart. They just want to help. That's all. That's it. And uh, now you mentioned the planning. I know uh, y'all probably take, uh, you probably plan this uh Probably all year long, don't you? I mean, correct. You, you try to think of things uh, that went right, things of things that might have gone wrong, and want to fix what went wrong, and uh, maybe add, like you said, you've added so many things. Uh, so uh, uh, you can't just do those in last minute deal and that's, pull it together. That's correct. And this year, especially since we had to come down and, and lay out the activities on a new set of property. Right. Now the old place up there, we could go in up there in one day and work line it all up and have it all marked off and ready to go for the parking and for the visitors and everybody else. But down here, we had to go down here and say, wait a minute now, well, that won't quite work. We got to rearrange this a little bit. And uh, it took a, took a couple of weeks to get what we've got now lined up to do this year. But I'm sure when we people start coming in, we're going to say, uh oh, we messed <laughs> up here. Yeah. We got to mark that down and do it differently next year. Yeah. But and we're looking forward to it. I mean, this, this location is is huge, folks. I mean, it's yes. is huge. And there's plenty of power, plenty of water. They have night lights down here, plenty of restrooms. You know, come on down. It, it's going to be a good event and a new opportunity to, to see what the whole valley, and especially the county and the city, has done here to provide a place like this for people to do stuff. Right. We're very fortunate to have that property here. The city and county went together and purchased that property. and. Uh, it's been a great uh, asset to the city and county both. Uh, as you said, you know, the Valley Fest is there and uh, they've had other things there as well. Right. Right. And uh, uh, that property needs to be used and, and they're working to do that. They're trying to get all kind of things there. And uh, now there's not any, uh, or I should ask, are there any other festivals like this in the area or do you have to go all the way? The number of tractor shows in uh, in our local area have really dwindled. Crossville had a show and it's kind of, it's no longer in existence. Cookville had a show and it's no longer in existence. When COVID came in, now we've had our show every year through COVID. We, we, met, we didn't skip a year. We said, okay, we're going to be open. If you want to come, that's up to you. Yeah. We put up signs, you know, saying honor the distance and so forth. And, and people came. But the other shows that shut down for COVID uh, decided not to start back up. The attendance was so low. Uh, as we said earlier, the people that are really interested in some of this equipment are, are old timers. Right. And uh, once they got out of the habit of coming or got to where they didn't feel like coming, it's, the attendance has really dropped off. These uh, 
some of the big shows are still going on all over the country. We go to big shows up in Greenville, and we go to Illinois and stuff to show. But that's that's the big the big, big shows. Yeah. And uh, but locally, you'd have to go a hundred miles to to have a decent show to go to. Yeah, and one thing uh, I want to bring out too is uh, I know my grandfather. Uh, he farmed, but he also worked. So right. a lot a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, in the days of yesteryear, uh, people had to work and then they had to come home and farm. Right. And, uh, or they farmed and then picked up odd jobs. Uh, you know, so it was uh, uh, constantly, all day long. They, they never, re and that's the thing about farming, you, you, uh, you may think you have a little time to, to rest, but uh, there's always something to do. Yeah, when I got out of high school, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to do. And I was talking to my dad and he said, I said, Dad, I think I want to, Farm, you know, if, if that's all right. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, son, go to school, get you a good job, then you can farm. Yeah. But if you don't do that, you won't be able to farm. Yeah. And he said, told me years after that, when I got my education and stuff, we bought the farm out. And uh, he said, now, in today's generation and in future generations, the only farmer that's going to make any money is the one that plants houses. <laughs> now look around. Yeah. Look at Hutlow as we yes. talked earlier. That whole big farm down there on that ridge is now solid homes. Yes. Uh -huh. And he told me that years ago. Said, you know, if you want to farm, you get you a good job, then you can farm. Yeah, and that, so the uh, farmer's life is never uh, it never ends. Up early every morning, right. and, and uh, as I say, till the cows come home, you're working till the dark thirty. And uh, a lot of times, I'm sure you've eaten probably plenty, uh, plenty of cold meals <laughs> or warmed them up. <laughs> Take a sandwich with you for lunchtime. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's correct. Well, Mr. Gray, is there anything else you'd like to add to what we've uh, said or anything we haven't said that you need to bring out? Uh, well, not right off. I think we've covered it pretty good. I just hope people uh, give us an opportunity and come on down and, and check out the show enjoy what's here we're going to have several food vendors we're going to have several craft vendors there so uh come on down check us out and we'll go from there all right appreciate it and thank you very much and again uh stays of yesteryear that is next weekend saturday the 21st and sunday the 21st now saturday it goes from nine to four and then on sunday afternoon it's uh is it 12 to 4 or 1 to 4 12 to 4 12 to 4. Come okay down. come down and see the lawnmower pools and ride the hayride that's right well, thank you, Mr. Graham. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll go to uh, a sponsor right now. Hey, everybody. This is Glenn Edison from Valley Views. We appreciate you watching our shows. And we would like for you to like, share, and follow us on Facebook, as well as like and subscribe to our YouTube page.